I talk to my good friend Sahan Vijayaratna, someone whom I met for the first time, maybe 10 years ago, when she joined one of the literature classes in the school I used to run. With Sahan in that same class were others like Randima Gonavala, Darshini Daulagala, and Hasanti Nugavala. So Sahan was the only person in that entire setup without a vela at the end of her name. After her degree at the University of Peradeniya, Sahan spent some time teaching both in Sri Lanka and outside. And over the years, while Sahan has gone her own way in writing, she has also been very supportive and encouraging in my literary endeavors. For a few years, Sahan has been living out of Sri Lanka and I got the good news through proxy that Sahan has actually come back home. And I thought of catching up with her for an intimate conversation through this podcast today. Well, Sahan, what can I say? Welcome back. Hi, Vihanga. It's it's definitely amazing to be back. Um, although I'm still in quarantine, it's amazing to be back in Kandy. So you have been traveling, conquering different parts of the world. And it's glad to know that you're back just in time for, I think, the 10th anniversary of our first meeting with some of our other friends, where we used to do some great stuff, right? Uh, literature related, uh, discussing art, theater, that kind of thing. Um, so, yeah, welcome back. Uh, how does it feel uh, to be back in Kandy? It feels like home again after a long while, you know, that sense of belonging is finally back and I'm never going anywhere else ever again. <laughs> That's the plan, at least. And yes, it's uh, been 10 years. A decade has gone since, you know, we met for the first time. And uh, I think my first glimpse actually at literature, at discussing literature rather than, you know, listening to it. Um, it's been a lifetime since then. And also some of our other friends from uh, your peer group, um, people like Piyumi, for example, uh, gone practically headlong into theater. I saw somewhere that she has just completed her master's uh, in theater. So people have been scattering like, you know, droplets out of a spray. So it's it's really good that you're back. Well, not entirely out of nostalgia, but the more I go on, uh, it is really kind of uh, encouraging me to go back to that idea of the kind of school where we met, the kind of school we had, just to kind of get this into a kind of a conversation. I would like to start off with... Um, the school itself, uh, the kind of thing we had going. Anything that you remember that you would like to kind of put on the table to kickstart this conversation? Well, it was definitely a beautiful time and, you know, much less complicated. And as I said before, my first hand experience at actually sitting down and discussing literature that one and a half hours weekly it didn't actually feel like a class at all it was more like a gathering that we could get together and speak and of course there are so many experiences you know so many events that uh, i would like to talk about but there's one thing that stands out and for me it's personally uh, how you reacted to my first answer that i've ever written you know actual essay that I had ever written um, to one of the questions that you have given in class. I don't remember the poem exactly, but um, after reading my answer, you said that my answer was quite mathematical. Um, I don't know if you meant it as a compliment or, uh, you know, whether you <laughs> rather wished that it was not so mathematical, but... I mean, from me, Sahan, mathematical doesn't sound like a compliment <laughs> to yeah, me. Exactly. It doesn't matter. It actually didn't matter. Anyways, it was wonderful to hear that, that um, you were ready to give that feedback. That was the first time that... I had heard someone actually talking about something that I have written and we know that went a long way so <laughs> yeah that was my first experience and I think I was you know uh, 
jumping through classes from one to one, actually trying to figure out where I belong and that uh, compliment or rather feedback or I don't know, judgment that actually uh, made me decide that this is where I belong and this is uh, what I'm going to do. So that was lovely. So speaking for myself, Sahan, for me also, this school was a, like a brilliant experience because I have been doing classes uh, for a while, but uh, given your particular year, so there were like uh, four classes going parallel uh, that made the, the school that I was running. So in your particular class there, uh, there was you um, and uh, three, three others, uh, Randima, and then there was Hasanti, right? And Darshani was there who actually uh, quite unforgivably ditched English to take up classics when she got into university, right? Then separately Ayodhya was there. Um, and also for a shorter time, uh, Natasha and uh, Gayanti. And of course, let me not forget <laughs> another class in which we had people like Ishanti and Pumi, right? So these are like people who really kind of went on to do great things in the next 10 years. And for me to be a part of uh, some of their formative years was uh, something that I really cherish even to this, uh, to, to this very day. So for me at One Devil, this was like working with uh, a small group of uh, brilliant people with so many different attributes and strengths. Um, and it was something I was waiting for. Uh, every week. I would even uh, not be lying if I say that compared to my, you know, my first job, my job proper, this was actually something uh, that I really enjoyed as a process and as a space that I was in. Do you remember some of these people? <laughs> I'm talking of them, but do you, do you remember? any of these people around us. <laughs> yes, of course. Actually, you know, uh, I was in the class with Hasanti Randima and uh, later on Darshani as well. I uh, knew Pyumi and those other girls, um, you know, from other places like Pyumi and Ishanti, we were studying at school together and Gayanti I had known uh, during my Olivers, actually, we had taken one literature class together and Natasha, uh, and Ayodhya I haven't met. Ayodhya I later got to know uh, at the university. But yes, definitely. And um, I think one of the reasons why the class was, I mean, the four of us, it was, um, you know, so enjoyable was it was completely different four personalities that were put together. And uh, I think the way that we, um, you know, understood the text that we were discussing or our theories were quite different and I remember how interested you were <laughs> to always you know when our own ideas were you know uh, against each other and we came into arguments how you took upon it um, yeah but you will be also uh, interested to know that I had a lot of pressure against uh, doing these classes especially uh, some people where I was working at uh, Sri Javadanapur at the time, and also some of the people at Peradeniya, uh, they were not uh, very keen on me doing classes like this. Um, I, to this day, don't understand what their problem was, um, because this is something I did out of uh, my own. I, it had a lot of sense to me what I was doing, um, and they couldn't relate to that. They looked at this as a form of exploitation conducting a class for five or six people, then uh, because there was a fee involved. So they, they thought that it uh, kind of uh, interferes with the sanctity of the great academy. So, so there were situations like that, but how this entire school thing first began was when uh, my father died, when I was a first year undergrad, I was like 19 plus going 20. And then suddenly there was a massive financial crisis um, because my father kind of uh, accounted for about 80% of our household income. And then I started doing some kind of teaching on a freelance uh, basis. And then gradually I kind of built up small groups around me. And by the time you guys came in 
2011-2012, uh, I had set down to a pattern of having uh, small classes that eventually kind of contributed to the, the idea of the school I was building. So it started from there. And then uh, when I started earning, when I started working, doing a job proper, I still had to support my family. And then I had to subsist for myself. So the school was my main income source. So I would work five days a week and then concentrate on this during the weekend. Uh, and of course, I remember uh, there were others, I think, in schools, especially teachers, who were not very inclined on people, uh, you know, working with me. Um, there were some experiences. Can you remember? <laughs> yes, definitely. I remember this, uh, that, you know, at a certain point, um, if you tell a teacher or a student sometimes that uh, you are attending one of Vihanga's classes, there's a certain look that they would give. And also there were certain rather personal questions mm, about uh, whether you are inappropriate uh, in your behavior while you take the classes as well. And um, when you somehow uh, got to know about this, I can't actually remember uh, whether I told you or whether Hasanti or whether you had come to know from uh, another source that these rumors were going on in the class when we told you that this was going on, that we were, uh, you know, interrogated about this, you uh, took your time and you demonstrated in the table while you um, sit in those chairs, how impossible it is for you to, you know, physically touch any of the girl's legs or hands and uh, uh, how impossible it is for you to do that. So, do you know exactly why would the people, you know, come up with these um, rumors or these myths? So what actually happened? What actually resulted in all of this? Well, Sahan, it's, 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 it's very difficult. Uh, I mean, from time to time, I have had uh, different theories. I mean, I can't, I, I won't also say that some of these rumors are without basis uh, because things I say, things I do, they're up for interpretation and people interpret them according to their own temperament. And then out of uh, a sense of civic duty, they kind of circulate them. Uh, in society and they take it upon themselves to safeguard the coming generation from potential threats to mankind. And uh, when you talk about the school, I think um, the fact that you actually call this a school and we have discussed about this, uh, I think earlier on, not in detail, but that this might be something that you would come back to or go back to. And this is something that you would actually plan to do in the future as well. Am I right? Definitely, Sahan. I mean, the more I go on in life, uh, the more clear it becomes to me that um, the investment that I should make uh, is on a school like what we shared, uh, 2011, 2012, um, because I have moved on. And from where I am now, I look back and I, I, I look at education in a slightly broader way. My reading is different. I hope I have a better understanding of what education is. And it becomes more and more clear to me that the kind of space we had uh, should be promoted, should be encouraged. It should play a big role. And uh, it is very probable because this is also kind of a megalomaniac dream I have to go back to that kind of educational space in the future. So with that, Sahan, I think we should <clears throat> graduate from uh, the school, <laughs> what we shared uh, 2011, 2012, because 2013 on, you were, you were in university, you were in Peradeniya. The university uh, some of us went, uh, the university I went to, the department I study in, the Department of English, you were there. I want to know briefly what university meant to you, the kind of um, mark university left in you, if not the mark you left in university? Yes, <laughs> to be honest, Vihanga, I um, have to say that university was not even in the picture until, um, you know, I really started to enjoy the private classes that we had. 
it was those discussions and um, those hours that we spent that made me realize that this is something that I would actually like to would like to pursue that uh, this is something that I would honestly enjoy in the future and that is when I decided that I would get into the university and um, when I started specializing uh, with English you know we got to um, study the history the philosophical side of it the literature political side of it and all of that together I think uh, university is a time where i had written most of my poems i have to say that it was you who um, always encouraged me to write i wouldn't even have dreamed about writing if it wasn't for you but it was during the university that i had the subject matter that i would like to actually go back to and analyze and think about and it was the writers that we discussed about uh, while we were in university that actually um, you know, resulted in most of my writing. Um, and especially, I think, philosophy. Now that I think about it, I think I actually regret not taking up philosophy as a course, a separate course. Um, because I think uh, in theory, when we discuss the philosophical stance of literature, that side of literature, um, I think it actually shaped my mind in a certain way that I would have never imagined it would and with my writing I was able to really understand what um, path that I would like to take in life what are the things that I would like to focus in life and it was the university experience that actually gave me that opportunity I would say I want to um, stay a little bit more with the writing Sahan uh, because your writing, it's um, got its own evolution, it's got its own arc. Um, nor do you write like too frequently, but when you write, you write in a very persuasive, compelling way. Uh, I have read this stuff. And also you're not a person who like has work published. Um, for some reason, I've just seen it in one forum or two. Uh, you don't really kind of put it out there on a blog or a website or even have them published. So I would say people who work around me, the kind of uh, writers who make my circle, uh, you're kind of a little odd egg there. <laughs> Throughout my life, Bihanka, as you know, um, I have um, been the odd one out and I honestly do take it as a compliment. I would like to talk a little bit more about your writing. Um, how it first started, how it has changed, um, how you see yourself as a writer. Do you see yourself as a writer, you know? And why do you write? What do you do with it? That kind of thing. Uh, but before we go into that, um, to talk about when I started writing, it was in school. Initially, it was in Singhala, but it wasn't always appreciated. <laughs> My teachers thought that uh, I might have taken these ideas or sentences or lines from somewhere else and that is when um, I started writing in English and with literature with studying literature for A-levels it was uh, easier for me to write and um, in university uh, it was quite enjoyable actually I wrote for personal reasons initially but in university um, I felt like it's something that I could actually do. That's something um, that would make me feel at ease. Um, and when I talk about my own evolution when it comes to my writing, um, I would say that it has definitely changed. My writing has become less personal and more relatable for a reason that I don't know. Uh, but when I discuss poetry with others, I feel that um, my poems too are, you know, relatable and that people are open to discussion because I think I have changed my style a bit. But still, I very much see my poetry as something that is personal and something that I would only discuss or, you know, enjoy with 
people who are much closer to me and also i feel like if i ever think of publishing it would become rather work than something that i would do for my own personal enjoyment so maybe because of that i haven't published and also um because i take it as something that is personal to me a task that is um, very much close to my heart and too close perhaps to be quote unquote work <laughs> no i i kind of uh, get what you mean sahan when you say it's personal but um, you know the 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 point you made about uh, this uh, school teacher or whoever uh, thought you were plagiarizing basically singhala poetry that kind of reminds me and it kind of inevitably brings me back to this uh, subject of uh, school um i don't know whether you been following but i recently had a similar conversation with a uh, couple of my peers from my own high school days about how things like discrimination and bullying um that kind of thing happens in the high school space uh, something hopefully i would like uh, keep on at for a while at least because i remember this kid who was in my class when i was in a uh, primary school uh who was being beaten every day uh he was being severely abused because he was not very good with his class work uh, he had a problem even writing sentences and things like that and the, this is actually one of my um, disturbing childhood memories this guy being beaten day in day out uh now that i think of it probably he had a condition like uh, dyslexia most most likely Uh, but then uh, you know when we were growing up uh, these things were not uh, uh, very well recognized or acknowledged uh, i don't know about the situation now i i really hope things have changed but the long story short this guy i don't remember him ever completing school uh, probably he dropped out halfway through probably uh, dropped out after o levels right because i don't remember him in my senior years at school until suddenly maybe a couple of years ago i got this friends request on facebook and uh, to see uh, he has actually evolved to be uh, a musician so today he's uh, like a musician and i think he's making a living out of music so it's a very very sad story when i look back on the kind of childhood treatment he used to get um so zahan uh, I want to just pick your brains how you would like to see the school classroom engagement with literature changing in how we look at literature how we study literature how we appreciate literature in the Sri Lankan classroom honestly this um, story it's quite touching because personally to me it's uh, quite compelling as i recently come to know that i was dyslexic and to remember the verbal abuse that i had to go through in primary school anyways um let's keep that aside and uh, to go into the uh, studying of literature in the sri-, sri lankan setting i would say that um it should be less of teaching i remember one of the first things that you said when we came into your class was that literature cannot be taught and which honestly did not make any sense at the time <laughs> but uh, to think of it now i think that should be um, you know a motto when it comes to literature in uh, sri lanka that the teachers should be asked to discuss literature to appreciate it sit and appreciate it with the students and make them realize that it's um, something that they can relate to rather than teaching it as a separate subject away from language away from all the other things we are you know asked to sit down and listen read the poetry get on with the correct pronunciation and language grammar rather than that to look at literature as something that can be enjoyable that can be um enjoyed by students even students who are maybe not so uh, fluent or comfortable with english so sahan uh, well it's almost uh, time now to kind of close shop 
Um, so finally, I would like to ask you whether you have anything to ask me, an opportunity for a million dollar question. Yes, that's wonderful. Um, honestly, I've been meaning to ask this question for a while, but um, I don't know why I didn't get to it. Anyways, uh, let's for a moment imagine that um, you are not a writer or you are not involved in any of these things that's going on in your life right now. Uh, where exactly would you be, Vihanga? What would you be doing? Any idea? That's the easiest question, Sahan, in like a million years. Because if I, wa if I wasn't in the academy or if I wasn't writing, that kind of thing, two options. Definitely, I would have been in Hollywood, most likely, making films, making um, a lot of money. Um, to make documentaries was something I wanted to do even as late as like early years in university, second year, third year. And if the documentaries failed, I would have been playing cricket, probably in the LPL, Lanka Premier League. I have a feeling that you might still get into documentaries, maybe later on, let's see. But the LPL definitely sounds uh, interesting. Okay, uh, one last question, Vihanga. Um, as weird as this might sound to you, uh, do you think that you have a preference between prose and poetry? I mean, personally, I know that uh, there is a certain irresistibility that I find in poetry, both in reading as well as writing. So do you think that uh, you have a fondness towards one? Uh, definitely, Sahan. Uh, poetry for me too. Um, uh, poetry kind of is very personal and it kind of gives you a freedom, which I think uh, prose doesn't, given the structural, formal um, aspects of prose. I mean, well, yeah, prose, also, I think it's uh, it's it should be a part of your exercise as a writer to experiment and try to break through. Uh, but definitely poetry. I would say the prose I used to write maybe 10, 15 years ago, much more refreshing than what I'm writing now. I think I've caved into the traps uh, prose sets you. Um, so the answer to you, once, twice, thrice, it's definitely poetry. So Sahan, I think uh, let's call it a day. I mean, we can catch up once again in a conversation like this. I hope uh, you're okay with me uh, publishing this uh, somewhere. I'm not very sure whether um, there will be people interested in, you know, eavesdropping to our conversations. Um, but hopefully at least it will add another dimension or a tinge uh, to the interests of the room among us. Yes, yes, definitely, Vihanga. It was quite a fascinating conversation for me as well. So until later then. Mm -hmm.